Hi, it's Marina J. How are you going? Let's talk narcissistic sisters and the sister wound. It's a really, really big one. And for the women that I see, they often find themselves and see if this is you. Do you often, when you meet with a potential girlfriend, do you find that you get familiar with her real quick and you overgive, you overdo in the relationship, and then somewhere along the line, you get burned. And maybe this friend rejects you, or she betrays you, or you realize that you are overgiving, but under receiving. So maybe you are always there for her when she needs help, but when you need help, she's never around. Or when you need help, the kind of help she gives you doesn't really work, right? Or it's not really at the level as to what you're needing, but she's always satiated when she's around you. And so you still leave her better, right? When you walk away, but you'll leave, you leave and you feel worse. So when we've had narcissistic sisters, and this could be a few sisters, right? I had one client and, and she had three of her sisters were narcissistic. You might find that you jump into relationships with women too fast. And the reason is because you're looking for that sister unconsciously. You might be looking for that closeness, that sister relationship with every woman you meet. And you might not even realize you're doing it. And this could be girlfriends, right? As in platonic girlfriends. This could be romantic relationships with women. This might be work colleagues for you where you immediately get overly close because you get all too familiar without looking for the signs to see, wait, is this person really for me? Is she really the kind of friend I want in my life? Is she really going to look after me? And if you've had a narcissistic sister you'll know that your sister would have been very callous with you, very, very um, sensitive to how you affect her, but very callous as to how she affects you. And so without even realizing it, if you look at the friendships that you've pursued, the relationships with women, just notice, have you chosen women that haven't really cared about you, that have been quite rough with you emotionally, that have been quite callous with you? So if this is you, this video is for you. Conversely, you may also be the sort of person that's like, actually, Marina, I do the opposite. I don't really have friends. Or if I do, it takes me years. I'm really, really careful. I'm really, really slow because of how I've been so burned in the past. So if this is you, amazing. But also see if you can go faster as well, because I don't know about you, like for all of us that have had narcissistic abuse, having beautiful relationships is really important now. And I don't want to go slow on calling in the kinds of colleagues and my inner circle, people that I want and need. I kind of want to take it a little bit slow, but not so slow that I'm isolated, right? And so this is for all of us. So if you've had sisters that have been narcissistic, there's the sister wound, right? There's a sister wound in you. And you might find that you're unconsciously walking around with this wound, trying to find other women to fill it, which means you're going to get too close too soon. And then the burn comes. And then you get to a point where you're so disillusioned. You're so upset. You're like, I'm just going to be a lone ranger. I'm not going to do it anymore. But also that doesn't feel right either. Long term, that doesn't feel right either. I remember somebody saying to me, she's like, well, you know, you can't miss what you've never had. So if you're somebody that has had narcissistic abuse from a sister, this could also be from a brother, right, from a sibling. I refute that. I actually feel that if you've had narcissistic abuse from your sister or sisters, even though you may never have had a genuine, proper, loving, warm, safe relationship with them, you still miss it. You still yearn for it. You still want it, which is why you might be looking for it in every woman that you meet. It also means that you're more likely to 
trade. So let's say that you've had a narcissistic sister. Notice for you if this is true. Are you somebody that when you meet a potential friend, you immediately want to become useful for her? You immediately want to help her? You immediately want to um, make her feel so lovely? And then you end up being liked for those very things. Like you, you, that person will like you for the way you make them feel. They'll like you for the help you give them. They'll like you for the usefulness that you are, right, in that relationship, which means you won't, um, how can I put it? Like you won't value you. You won't just assume that you're going to be liked and loved and that somebody would just find you funny. You feel like you have to overgive. So you feel like you have to be on your A game in order to be accepted, to be a friend, to be loved, and to not be rejected. Because remember, with narcissists, you're pedaling hard. With narcissists, you always have to overdo, overgive, and it's never enough. So if you start doing that with these female friendships, just notice for you, does that ever work for you? If you find that you're overdoing, you're overgiving, you're overbeing and all of that, and maybe this woman in your life, the friend in your life, only really sees what you do for her. She doesn't actually see you. Part of that is because of the trade that you began doing in the first place, that you only felt you could be seen for these things. And so then when we get hurt and upset, we have to hug ourselves and go, well, I set it up this way just because of the abuse. But what if I actually start genuinely being me? Can I be me when I'm with you without overgiving, overhelping, and being, so, you know, often we can, and this is for a lot of women I see, is we can almost become so important in somebody else's life to avoid being rejected. Right. So we kind of like put that in play, but then we wonder why that friend, that woman isn't really there for us. It's not a real relationship because it's based on a trade. And that trade is you basically saying, please don't leave me. I'm going to be all of these things because I don't feel that you're going to love me for me. I don't feel that I'm important enough. I don't feel that I'm going to value me and what I say. So I'm going to give, give, give loads, 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 because that's my payment for staying in the relationship. Because I don't believe that you're going to stay with me if I'm not happy or if I've got a real problem and suddenly I get really upset. My fear is that I'm going to be too much for you because with the narcissists, I'm too much. And so now with you, I'm going to hold myself in. I'm going to hold myself back. But then I'm never really going to know what it feels like to have a genuine friendship. And I'm always going to be left feeling like nobody really knows me. Nobody's a real friend to me. And this is the sister wound, right? This is the, 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 the feminine wound, the sister wound from, from narcissistic sisters. And so other things that I see with women that have had the sister wound is because they're trading on being useful, they don't feel like they would be enough if all they did in an interaction is laugh and have fun. So they cap it and they start talking about something important or serious again. Just notice if that's the case for you. Are you... Do you feel safe enough to be with a friend, a female friend, and not help her with her problems, not be useful, not be in a particularly good mood? So you're not trying to make you know her feel amazing. You're just being you. You're not particularly interesting. You're not particularly funny. <laughs> and you're not anything in particular. And just see what comes up for you. Just notice what comes up for you, right? It's a huge, huge thing that I see with the beautiful women that are in my world. So that's a big one, right? That is that is the sister wound because the, the, the person that you spent your formative years with was either blaming you or attacking you, not letting you have things for very long. 
So how many of you had toys? You might have had a Barbie doll, a Cindy doll, something that you love and you weren't allowed to have it very long for very long. Narcissists interrupt you a lot. There's a lot of interruptions. So part of that sister wound, and in fact, it's a sibling wound, is if you were growing up, you might not have been able to have anything for very long before it got taken away or before your good mood got taken away. So having and holding, whether that's money, whether that's relationships, whether that's things that you want, can feel dangerous because there's something in you that's still thinking it's gonna, the bubble's gonna burst, it's gonna get taken away. So this is like in the relationships that you have now with noticing again, like is one of the things that you hate being misrepresented because growing up with these narcissistic sisters, more than likely they were running to your parents, complaining about you, blaming you when actually it was their fault. Notice if now you're almost waiting to be misrepresented or let's say not necessarily waiting to be misrepresented, but let's say whatever you've said has been misrepresented and misunderstood online on social media. Notice if you get really upset and angry around that. Notice if that really triggers you. And maybe the only time you can fully relax is that, oh, they've given me a good answer. Okay, good, I can relax. Because you're so used to being unfairly blamed, unfairly criticized, and completely misrepresented and twisted, like what you've said or done has been twisted, right? You're the perpetrator, not me. And so when you create something, it could have been a book, you might have written a book, it might be stuff you're putting on the internet, it might be things that you're putting out there, it might just be something you've said. Notice if you're hypersensitive to being misrepresented, again, that tracks back to the times when you were. Um, notice as well about how, how do you feel with the attention being on you? A sibling, a narcissistic sibling, a narcissistic sister wants all the attention on themselves. And notice for you, if you're uncomfortable with it or you're just used to not having with it, and maybe that gives you a sort of, like a lower sort of sense of self-worth, like you're like, mm, I'm sort of used to not having the attention. I'm okay with that. I'm going to keep that. Or maybe if the attention's on you and people are giving you a lot of attention and a lot of lovely attention and it's compliments and it's, you're amazing and all of this, is it hard for you to know what to do with it? Is it hard for you to know what to do with it? So notice as well, if you're somebody that accepts the blame all too readily. So in relationships, are you the first person to say sorry? Are you the first person to accept blame when actually it wasn't just you, it was them as well, or maybe it was them? Are you somebody that overly takes responsibility for outcomes, right? And so I remember seeing this, right? Like there was a, a friend of mine and she overly took responsibility for outcomes, uh, all the outcomes on her holiday. She took a bunch of friends with her and she said, nobody else can do the itinerary. So it's got to be me. And then after she came home, she said, it wasn't really a holiday. All she felt she was doing was herding all of her friends around the island they were on. And I asked her and I said, you know, how did that feel for you? She goes, yeah, I can't do that again. But I've learned to be useful in lieu of being loved and cherished just for being me. And that's the sister wound, right? Now that can also be... The, the narcissistic parent wound, the father wound, the mother wound, but particularly around friends, it's often the sister wound. Notice if you are overly taking responsibility for the outcomes at work, um, with your clients, with maybe what you and your partner are gonna do tonight, you and your children are gonna do. Notice if you take over responsibility for your children or how they feel for, how they're performing at school, how much homework you're doing for them, right? All of that stuff. And notice if you are attracted to watching, say, TV shows that have that female component, that female friendship component, 
And maybe when you watch it, you feel satiated because you're not having that. That could be Sex in the City. That could be a reality show, right? Like Housewives, the Kardashians, where it's that sisterly bond where you're like, I want some of that in my life, but I'm not able to get it. So if you recognize yourself here and you really want to flourish after narcissistic abuse and you know that you've got this sister wound, part of your healing is in you spending a little longer with yourself. Just start to spend a little longer with yourself in terms of giving yourself a little bit more attention. So that might be when you are getting ready in the mornings, spend a little more time just on you. Start to give yourself a bit more attention on yourself than maybe you're comfortable doing. And when you do that, you're going to get used to being more comfortable with the real kind of attention that you want, the real love and nourishing attention that you want. Because when somebody like you, who is used to trading in a relationship, instead of allowing herself to be fully loved and fully cherished and fully adored and fully safe, it's so important for someone like you to change all of that around. And I realize that some of you will be men who have had narcissistic sisters. So the way that that's going to start to affect you is in, quite interestingly, a very similar way, but more to do with the women in your life. So if you are looking for a romantic relationship with women and your first experience has been with a narcissistic sister, just notice if you already are assuming that you're not going to get very much back from these women, that you're going to be plowing all of your energy into them, your energy, your attention, and she's going to keep telling you what she wants and what she needs, but she's not going to give you empathy. She's not going to give you softness. She's not going to give you unconditional love, right? It'll be very conditional. There'll be times when you do well, right? And you please her. And then she might just not get angry with you, but it'll be just like that, right? She'll be um, very sort of average and normal with you. And the times where you don't do it right or you don't please her, she will punish you. And you will start to feel like you are tiptoeing around this woman that you love, that you can never make her happy. It's never enough for her. She's always blaming you and she's in control because you can't say no to her. That is a sister wound. And the way that we want to be healing all of this is exactly what I was saying just then, is begin by giving yourself the kind of attention that you are looking for in the outside world. Because when you start to do that, the outside world can mirror it back to you. Because for somebody like you, who is so beautiful and so caring, you deserve your own love. You deserve time spent on the self to turn all of this now into an incredible learning experience so you can really become the person you were born to be. So much love to you.